probably seen a few videos about a VR game called Blood Trail a few years back, since a lot of big YouTubers promoted the game. They put a smile on their face, made the game look fun and exciting, and probably took a paycheck for it behind the scenes. I mean, let's just be honest here. That's something that we don't really do here. That's right, uh... Electrovore, it's your worst enemy, someone who actually gives a damn. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mac Cheese, the host of the Jetavision, and tonight we're reviewing Blood Trail. Blood Trail is an early access VR game being sold for $25, and it's mostly a wave shooter. You got these bald guys coming at you, they're cultists or something, and you gotta take them all out. Of course, like most wave shooters on the VR market, Blood Trail's got itself a gimmick that it tries to use to set itself apart from the competition, that being blood and gore. Now, the gore's actually done very well. I don't think I need to do much else than show it to you in action for you to understand understand how good it is. Also done well are the ragdoll physics. You know, seeing enemies stumble as they shoot them or plop forward as a satisfying realistic touch. Now, the blood and gore is kind of the selling point to this whole game, and it's easy to see why when you actually play it for yourself. It's just about the only thing it actually does good. Something you're gonna notice right off the bat is how wonky the hands feel. Best as I can describe it, it doesn't really feel like the movement of your in-game hands matches the movement of your real hands. So, basically, anything to do with involving your hands isn't gonna feel that intuitive. Not good for a VR game. If you want an idea of how bad it is, if you rotate your hands without actually moving them, your hands in game will completely change position. And I'm pretty sure the devs know that this is somewhat of an issue because there's some sort of hand calibration menu that you can use to like manually uh, adjust your hands. I have no idea how it works or really what it's even for, but uh, it's there I guess. You no, know, it's like the developers themselves are saying, oh yeah, we acknowledge that this is a problem, but we won't actually fix it. Now obviously the VR hands being generally clunky means that handling weapons in game is gonna be an issue. When you're hands in real life and in game you know aren't really matching up and they aren't that well synced with each other it's gonna make gunplay awkward if you take a vr game that does its guns good and then you play blood trail the difference becomes night and day in any other games guns feel natural and intuitive you never find yourself fumbling around with them not in blood trail nothing to do with involving the guns feels right holding them doesn't feel right reloading them doesn't feel right pulling back the slide doesn't feel right nothing feels right and i really don't know what it is but aiming is an absolute chore and obviously that can be chalked up to the game's weird implemented hands, but I mean, I swear. No, you, you can put your iron sights right over the enemy and you'll just miss, miss, and miss and never hit what you're trying to aim at. Long distance engagements are just awkward. They're practically impossible. No, I, I guess my main criticisms with the guns is just that they don't feel right. You play Pavlov, you play Boneworks, you play H3VR, it, it feels right. The guns feel natural and intuitive. And then you play Blood Trail and you just get the feeling that something isn't being done correctly. Melee weapons. Those are a thing in the game, I guess. Where do I start? I mean, for one, you got the these bladed weapons, you can stab people and slash at them. Although the game doesn't really have slashing mechanics implemented, at least not in a refined sense, so you can stab people. And some weapons do feel realistic, while others, it just kind of feels like you're stabbing air. It's also worth mentioning that you can't reorient the way you hold the weapons. Like, if you want to hold a knife in the old reverse hammer position, the game doesn't let you do that. You have to hold it hammer style. Blunt weapons, like hammers or baseball bats, also lack consistency. Sometimes you'll hit people and they'll react accordingly, but other times they, they go flying as if they were a store mannequin. Sometimes they don't even react at all. And you know, when you hit someone with a blunt object, you expect the face to get mutilated, right? Not in Blood Trail. You hit them, hit them, hit them, but nothing really happens for it to feel satisfying. It's really not enough that the faces just kind of explode after a certain number of hits. I expect broken noses, dislocated jaws, and caved-in skulls. And the hand-to-hand -hand combat isn't that much better. It just isn't. If you want a game that actually does melee combat well and satisfyingly, I'd try Blader and Sorcery or Gorn. We might actually end up reviewing those games on the channel, so stay tuned. But yeah, if you want good melee, get those games instead. And now the maps, some of them are alright. I think the game's at its best when the maps are tight in close quarters, but then there's these maps that you really wonder what they were trying to do with them. There's this one map that's this uh, gigantic compound. It's got verticality and all these different locations and areas on it. It's a very big map. The thing with such a large map like that, though, is you kind of have to justify why it's going to be so big. Why is he gonna need all this space? How's the player gonna maneuver around it? Why should there be all this verticality in different levels if the game doesn't even have climbing mechanics? If I can stay in one area of the map and completely ignore the other part and still play through the game with absolutely no difference, you failed at map design, bud. And I'd say this problem kind of affects two of the five maps in this game. There's this kind of abandoned school hallways type of map that's pretty sizable. There's a bunch of areas and rooms in it, but you can just really camp in one part of the map and you'll be fine. As far as the difficulty of the game goes, I don't 
think I've ever played a wave shooter where the max amount of enemies that could come at you at once is three. So you never really find yourself getting overwhelmed or anything. And I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of a wave shooter. The fun of wave shooters derives from you beating back the odds, which isn't really a feeling you can get when you play this game. The fact that this game never really gets challenging just makes it insanely repetitive and flat out not fun. Now there is a difficulty selection, but all it really does to my knowledge is change the damage you receive when an enemy hits you. It doesn't make them smarter, or maybe they wear armor and you have to aim in the right spots in order to hit them. They just deal more damage, which is the laziest way you could have gone about it. And then there's this raid game mode where you're going into these compounds and clearing out rooms and stuff, and you're getting ambushed by all these enemies along the way. It's a lot less cooler than it actually sounds. If you're hoping for some SWAT or Hotline Miami action, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. In reality, you go down a trail, an enemy pops out at you, you shoot him, you keep going, another one pops out at you, you shoot him, keep going, you reach this compound, kind of shanty town, go into a building, shoot some enemies who are just kind of standing there, go into another building, shoot some more enemies who are just kind of standing there, and then you go to the next level. Yeah, it's kind of lame. And at the time, this game mode's so dark that you can barely even see where you're going. And uh, something else I noticed about this game is the vibration of the controllers are incredibly faint. Usually when you fire a gun or you hit or you stab someone, the controllers rumble very noticeably. Or at least in any other VR game they do because it's immersive and players are gonna want that feedback. In Blood Trail, they're so unnoticeable that it makes the combat much less satisfying. I also find it funny that vibration isn't coded to the hand that's firing the gun, but rather the dominant hand that you choose in the settings. You choose right hand dominant, but you shoot a gun with your left hand, it's still the right controller that vibrates. I don't know why it's coded that way. This is some Yandere simulator type stuff, man. Seeing as how this game is in early access, I think it's worth talking about how the game has progressed, because believe it or not, this isn't our first review of the game. Not even our second. It's our third rodeo. The game's been out for four years now, and not much progress has really been made. I mean, the developers are definitely adding things, but whenever they do, it's half-baked and poorly implemented. The developers have this mindset of implement now, polish and fix later. And people are gonna try and defend this game, the Blood Trail apologists that exist for some reason. Oh, it's early access, there's only two developers, well yeah, but there are early access games in the VR space made by just one person, no less. These sorts of games have absolutely flourished on the market and have made rapid addition. You play them, come back to it after a year, and it's a completely different game. So it's no wonder when I look at these games that have grown so much over the years, and then I look at Blood Trail, which has practically remained stagnant for its entirety on early access, and you can't help but feel a little iffy about it. And don't get me wrong, I, I'd say the developers are pretty sketchy. I mean, how else am I supposed to describe someone who puts more effort into promoting their games instead of actually developing it? But I wouldn't say that they're out to scam people. I can say that with some amount of confidence. I want to see the good in people, so I just think that they're not that good at what they do. And if the developers can't inspire confidence of a polished, finished product in the foreseeable future, much less at any point in time, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't really recommend a game like that. Why would I? Blood Trail is a game that does one thing right, but gore isn't enough to make a game. Any fun that could be had is immediately snuffed out by janky controls, unchallenging, slow, and just not fun gameplay, inconsistent weapons, decent at best, and questionable at worst map design, and mechanics that are really only partially developed. This game is ultimately ultimately marked by its ambition and its developer's incapability to fulfill it. I'm gonna give this one a 4 out of 10. Recommendations, not at all. Do not buy this game at any price. Don't even wait for a sale. There are better choices out there. If you really want to get this game, honestly, just see how it turns out. Don't waste your money on something that might not even get finished. Whether you're new to the channel or a long-time viewer, if you want to stay up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow our Twitter, and join our Discord. Ladies and gentlemen, Mac Chista, Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.